Hey everyone, today we are going to try a new vision language model locally, Mini CPM V 4.5. So, what if I told you there's a new AI model, small enough to run on your smartphone, that's outperforming GPT 4.0 and Gemini 2.0 Pro on vision and language tasks? The Mini CPM V 4.5, the surprise underdog of the multimodal world, it's only 8 billion parameters, that's tiny compared to models like Quen 2.5 VL at 72 billion. But somehow, it's better. At image understanding, at OCR, at reading documents, even at spotting text in handwritten notes or complex PDFs. It's beating giants like GPT-40 on benchmarks like OCR Bench and OmniDoc Bench. And here's the wild part. It can watch videos, not just one frame, but dozens of frames per second. Because it invented something called a 3D resampler. Instead of turning every video frame into thousands of tokens, which would choke any local device, it squishes six frames down to just 64 tokens. That means it can process up to 10 frames per second on your device smoothly. No cloud needed. And it doesn't stop there. You can switch between fast thinking for quick replies, like, what's in this photo? or flip to deep thinking mode when you need a full analysis. Explain the geological formation, tourist tips, and cultural context. And yes, it does all this in over 30 languages. So how can we try it? There's a comfy UI custom node or from mini CPM v GitHub project code. You can download quantized versions, int4, g, g, u, f, a, w, q, and run it offline on your device, even without a GPU. There's an iOS app already live on iPhones. They recorded demo videos on device, no edits. Just pure, local AI power. It's open source, free for commercial use if you fill out a quick form, built on Quen3 and SIG LIP, but way smarter than its parts. So to install this custom node, there's a way to do it. Go to your command prompt window in the virtual environment. I'm using Conda environment and head over to your custom nodes folder. Under that folder, you can type git clone and the GitHub project URL. It'll download the Comfy UI Mini CPM custom nodes. Next, we're gonna get the pip installed for the dependencies and also some other stuff in there. So you gotta go to the requirements.txt under the Comfy UI Mini CPM folder, not the custom nodes folder. So go into the Comfy UI Mini CPM folder and run pip install from there. After that, you'll get a success message. Then you're going to need the llama.cpp install for your virtual environment too. You're going to use that for portable Comfy UI versions as well. So it's not in the Comfy UI Mini CPM main folder. As you can see, my error message here. When I follow these instructions, the pip install is correct. But if you go to the llama.cpp install, this Python code isn't in the Comfy UI Mini CPM main folder. You have to go under this subfolder called llama.cppp-install, and there's the Python code right there. So to do that, you got to go to this folder path, and these folder paths are inside your custom nodes. Then go into Comfy UI Mini CPM, and there's a llama.cpp-install.py file here. Copy this folder path, go directly into this folder, and inside it, run the Python code. So you type Python llama.cpp install.py. It'll start downloading the wheel files that are suitable for your environment, clean up some cache, and start building the Python wheel that works with your PC or your virtual environment. So, as you can see right here, we gotta download llama.capp Python and some dependency libraries. And lastly, it'll build the wheel for Python. Wait for a moment. This part takes a while to run. Then you restart Comfy UI and you're ready to go. After you install the mini CPM custom nodes, you can find there's two custom nodes for this AI model. First, the simple basic one, and another one's the advanced version, with more options to tweak the AI model's temperature, top P, top K, how it responds, how many tokens it uses, memory size, all that stuff. Everything can be searched or adjusted in Comfy UI when you type mini CPM into the search bar. Or another way, go to Add Node, find AI Labs. There's a submenu called Mini CPM, and you'll see those two nodes right there. Anyway, this AI model custom node is pretty straightforward. 
you're just using it like any other vision language model, how you'd usually use it for image to text captioning or whatever. The mini CPM for video to text captioning? That's way more fun. And actually, I'll try one right here. It's really easy to do. First, I'm going to use the mini CPM advanced node since it has more configs for memory handling and all those details. You're going to drag the video input in here. And let's say I want to create videos from image frames. Then we've got the load video node here, which we usually use for loading reference videos and workflows. So connect the images here and the audio here. Set the FPS to match the reference video. One of the easiest ways is using video info and dragging its FPS output right here. So now we've got the exact same FPS as our reference video. Another way to grab info from your video is by choosing a preset prompt. There's a section of predefined prompts in this custom node for running with mini CPMV. Things like video description, analyze, identify, explain, etc. So I've played around with all these options already, and I found out that video description and analyze bring in way more depth. They give you a richer breakdown of each object in the scene, especially good for multi-camera shots or longer video durations. So if you've got videos with multiple camera angles or scenes switching back and forth, that's perfect for this. Let's say I have this example. A guy walking down the street. Super typical footage for testing. So here, I've got 741 frames. It can handle really long clips without eating up too many resources on your local PC. Your strength here controls the response output from the AI model. The prompt box here just shows you what you've input. So let's say I don't want to type any custom prompt. Just use the predefined option to generate the text for me. Let's say I pick identify. The way to do it? You don't even need to touch anything else. Just click run. Click run and you'll see how it goes. First time, it'll load the video frame by frame, and the first time you run mini CPM, it'll download the AI model from Hugging Face. It'll show something like this. I captured the first time I ran it. It took about four minutes because it downloaded some files, so you gotta be patient. If your internet's slow, it'll take a few minutes to finish. Then, as you can see, after we switch back to the Comfy UI tab, it's already showing the identification of what's in the video. The predefined prompt for identify asks the AI, what objects or subjects did you see in this video? And through processing, the AI tells you, I see a young man walking down the street with his camera hanging around his neck. It gets super detailed, what gear he's wearing, what outfit he's got, the background environment from start to end, and it even tells you how long the clip duration is, and it's accurate. If you want to do something more advanced, like you've got a long video, not just one static shot, you want to know what happened throughout the whole thing? Like this example I did earlier. Before recording this video, I tested it with a boxing match clip, and I used a custom text prompt. So I told the AI, describe what's happening in this video and give me a dialogue style summary every five seconds. Pretty standard LLM instruction. And the result? It gives me a timeline breakdown every five seconds what's happening in the video. That's super useful if you're digging into making AI movies or short films. You can study different timelines from other videos or shorts, see what the scripts or content look like, and use that as a reference to improve your own creations. Let's say, for example, I've got a movie scene here. In this example, just pretend this is a movie, because we can't use real movies as an example in YouTube video due to copyright. So this footage, Let's say you take a partial clip, 200 frames. You want to study what's going on in this scene. You run mini CPM with your custom prompt and you get this text result as your own reference to tweak your prompts later when creating AI videos. Like, let's say I generate this and wait for the result. Now I've got this output and what you can do, use this dialogue as your own text prompt for text to video generation. Say I've got this two dialogue snippet, I'll use it as a reference for my text to video test. Then I plug it into a simple text to video tool, maybe WAN 2.2, just to see what happens. I'm not enabling any LoRa's here, just running it with Light X2 V LoRa, low sampling steps. So I'll use the prompt I got from Mini CPM, the first five seconds of dialogue, and try to recreate something similar in an AI generated video. 
Of course, it won't perfectly replicate the exact movements of people fighting because it's text to video, but you get a similar environment. And the idea? You can use this as a reference to build something similar in your own AI video. Another simpler way? Use less complex actions, like this guy walking. Use this as captioning. Generate a dialogue style caption throughout the entire video, then feed that into a text to video model, WAN 2.2 or whatever's capable. And without control net? Sure, you can try it. But if you're doing fight scenes, you should definitely use control net, maybe WAN 2.1 vase, to get better motion control and reference images for accuracy. But for simple movements, like this guy walking, you can totally use this captioning method. I'll take the text prompt from mini CPM, clean it up a little, remove the end bits if I don't need them, just keep the beginning. So now I've got this clean reference. I use it to generate a new AI video, same vibe, same motion, a guy walking sideways carrying a camera with a bag, super similar to what the AI described from the reference video. And then I generate it with a different style, different lighting, different art direction, but same core motion. And look, this is just text to video, very basic. If you want full control over the movement from your reference video, then yeah, you gotta use control net and generate your own reference image based on the pose. And as I mentioned, WAN 2.1 vase helps a ton for that. I've covered how to use control net with reference images for generating new videos. You guys can check that out. And that's it for now. How to use mini CPM as a vision language model to assist with prompting and understanding video context. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.